Hello again guys. So today we're going to talk about the American Dream. This has been on my mind quite a bit because so many people have a different definition of what the American Dream is and none of them are really right. <laughs> um, so people say, you know, it's for a house. Some people say it's to come to America. Some people say it's to make a bunch of money. Some people say it's just to work a nine to five and be happy. Some people say it's all kinds of things. Some people say it's dead. Um, so for me, when I was reading about the American dream, what America was, you know, my, even my history teacher taught me who, what America was, is that this is the land of freedom and opportunity. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today and where these ideas come from. <music> So like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about it today. I'm going to leave you with some links, talk a little bit, you know, in the description and talk a little bit about why I think these people are wrong, why I don't think it's dead, why I don't think that a house is the American dream, why I don't think, you know, all those things I listed is the American dream. All right, so I'm going to read the Declaration of Independence. And the Declaration of Independence is really where all of this started for us when it came, when it comes down to a, an organized America. All right. So let, let me just read this and I'll go through it with you. All right. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands, which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separate. So essentially, they're writing down why they don't want to be part of the British government anymore. And um, they say that this is a natural thing. It's part of the natural law that God wrote. Okay. So from the beginning, there is a, there is a belief in natural law, a law that supersedes the idea of king or government, right? So let's continue. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. So this is very important, okay? The American dream, the dream that, that birthed America into the great experiment that it is now, is not being owning a home, is being free in the natural rights that you have given to you by God. All right. And that is a very different idea than owning a home. All right. You should think about that for a little bit. Just think about that. Most, if not all other forms of government, let's just say for lack of a better term, did not recognize the natural rights of man. They believe that man was here to be ruled by someone who put, who was put here by, you know, God, right? And even today in Christianity, we have this thing where we say, well, we respect our, um, we respect our leaders, right? Okay. So in America, for us, our leaders are not the people in DC, Washington, DC. They are your fellow Americans. Says right there. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it again. Okay. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. A government exists because we as people say, we want you to do these jobs for us. Right? So not... Because they're here not to control us, not to make decisions for us, not to do this, but we have placed them on one or two tasks, right? And um, 
I believe the uh, Constitution goes into what those tasks are and what they are not. Okay. So let's just continue from there. Okay, there's that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. All right. So basically, if we don't like what the government's doing, is our right given to us by God to then change it, overthrow it, completely erase it and start again. All right. So the American dream is not a nine to five, 2.5 kids, etc. That's not the American dream. That's not what these men dreamed of. What they dreamed of was maintaining and maintaining and defending the natural rights given to us by God. All right. And that you can core, you can just core that down into the word freedom. Okay. So owning a home and doing all these other things that I listed and even saying is dead is not accurate because owning a home and things like that are, are a, I guess, natural extension of being free, but it's also why it's not dead because the American dream is a freedom that you are given as soon as you're born. That is freedom that you are given when you're born because you exist, you have freedom. It's a natural law that God gives you. All right. So it can't be dead because you have it simply for being here. All right. And he goes on to talk about tyranny and things like that, but that's the American dream. If we want to go back even further from that, whenever the Puritans came over here, you know, for twice, I think, um, <clears throat> they came here in search of religious freedom because a government was telling them either A, they could not read the Bible or B, they could not read this or that Bible. All right. So they wanted religious freedom. They wanted the freedom to think for themselves, to worship God the way that they want to and not have the government tell them how to do it and not have the government get involved in their lives and things like that. If you think about our founding, you know, the, the tea, what is it called? <laughs> they had the, uh, the tea party or whatever, where they threw tea over because there was a 1% tax. Okay. Think about how much you're taxed now. Nobody wants to do anything about it. Right. So anyway, um, these, this is about being able to make choices that make sense for your life. And that is a very Christian ideal, right? In Christianity, the freedom to make the choice of yes or no, is seen all throughout the Bible. You've got, you've got the, uh, oh no, I can't remember where he's at, but basically he's saying it's very popular amongst us, but you know, he's saying, choose this day who you will, <clears throat> who you will serve either, either God or mammon. But as for my house, we are going to choose God, right? And so he then walks off and that's, that's, you have to choose. Are you going to serve God or not? When Jesus calls forth and goes and gets his disciples, he tells them, follow me. They have a choice to make at that point. Do I go or do I stay? The rich uh, young man, ruler, however you want to say it in the Bible, is told by God, by Jesus, to give away all of his money, I think possessions, but I know money, to the poor, okay? And he walks away sad, right? Because now he has a choice to make. What am I going to do? Am I going to give it away and thus fulfill what I, who I believe God, you know, is telling me? Or am I not going to? People inherently want to be able to make choices for themselves. When we, as we grow up, 
we say, I want to be grown up so I can do what I want to do. That is a, that is an immature way of saying, I want the freedom to make the choice. Now, obviously throughout history, we have decided that some choices <laughs> are not correct, no matter what the circumstances. So like murder, you can't murder people, rape is wrong, etc. right? But mostly, I should be able to make the choice to turn right or left. I should be able to make the choice to take a medicine or not. I should be able to make the choice of how I want to live. If I want to live in a tent on the side of the road, I should be able to. If I want to live in a sticks and bricks that's six stories tall, I should be able to. That is the thing. That is, that is the American dream. Can I live in an RV if I want to? Yes, I can. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Can I live in a lavish home if I want to? Yes, I can. And there's nothing wrong with that. Can I make millions of dollars if I want to? Yes, I can. And there's nothing wrong with that. Can I make a minimum amount and live very simply? Yes, I can. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You can live anywhere in the middle. You can do both. You can do some of, some of this and some of that. That's freedom. That's the American dream. In a nutshell and so for me I, I hear this all the time this is the the american dream is gone the american dream is dead this is not the american dream this is not what america was about guys I, you know i don't think people understand what the american dream is half the time but that's what they were doing so i wanted to show you something else oh not that one these quotes right Maya Lin, to me, the American dream is being able to follow your own personal calling. To be able to do what you want to do is incredible freedom. And it is. Learn more about the laws in other countries in which you can and cannot do. It's very important. Let's see, where is this over here? Uh, here it is. The American dream comes from opportunity. The opportunity comes from our founding principles our core values that's held together and protected by the Constitution. Those ideas are neither Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, white, or black. Those are American ideologies, right? So the people on this quote page have a lot of negative things to say. Here's Whoopi Goldberg. I am the American dream. I am the epitome of what the American dream basically said. It said you can come from anywhere and be anything you want in this country. That's exactly what I've done. All right. It's hard for me to take people seriously when they say the American dream is dead. I don't think they know what it is. Mm -mm. Bill Ran I don't know, Ran Rancic? The American dream is still alive out there and hard work will get you there. You don't necessarily need to have an Ivy League education or to have millions of dollars startup money. It can be done with an idea, hard work and determination. This is what I'm talking about. You can go out there, work very hard, make a lot of money, work very hard and fail. A any of it is possible. But that freedom to do that is the dream. Okay, and that's the only ones that, I wanted, that I've read. Um, but these houses, this money, things like that, this, th those things are not the dream itself. They come from the dream. They are a result of the dream, but they are not the dream itself. The dream is being able to make your choice, being able to say yes or no, having that freedom, knowing, uh, having freedoms also that are derived from God. And that's higher than government that's higher than the guy sitting next to you that's higher than any other idea if god is the one who gave them to you god's the only one who can take them from you all right he's the only one who can say hey you don't have this anymore or hey this is not the way you should do things and that that is also a christian concept where you have in the bible where you have interaction with god there is always a choice you can choose to do or not do and have the consequences of either one another one that's famous for christians is the one where um, the sacrifice of i believe it's isaac where god says sacrifice your son the son's isaac i think 
And um, he takes him up there and that's what he's going to do because he decided to follow God and do what God said. And God provided a lamb instead, right? He provided a sacrifice instead of it having to be his son. So we have choice, freedom of will of choice. That's the American dream. So when you guys are out there and you hear like, we don't have free will, we don't, we don't really make choices, etc. To, to someone like me, that's a direct attack on how we were actually built as people created. God created us with choice. Go straight back to the beginning, Adam and Eve. They were given a choice. Here's this apple or here's this fruit. We don't know if it's an apple or what it was. Here's this fruit. Don't eat of it, but you can eat everywhere else. He didn't just put it away. He gave them the ability to make the choice. That's freedom, right? That's freedom. Now, that's all I really wanted to say. I get really... Guys, the American dream is not dead. It can't die because God lives forever, okay? <laughs> Basically. But uh, that's how someone like me sees it oftentimes. I'm not going to say every single person. I'm not going to say I speak for all Christianity. But for me, when I read my Bible and then I look at that concept right there, they are twins. All right. These men were trained classically and with the Bible. Many of them learned how to read on the Bible. They didn't have, they did have like little starter books, but not as many. And just about every house had a Bible. Okay. If you didn't, if you heard it, you heard it all the time. And if you didn't hear it, then somebody else was reading it, right? Somewhere at somebody else's house. Going to church was very commonplace. Even if you didn't believe in God, you went to church because that's where everybody went, right? So these concepts, the biggest one is freedom. God says you get to choose whether you're saved or not. Believe in me is a choice, all right? So that's, I got to stop because I'll keep thinking of other, <laughs> I'll just keep going. So I don't know where to put this Bible study or whatever. I think I'll probably put it there. But guys, the American dream is freedom. It's freedom to choose. So anytime any government or any person is like, well, you can't make that choice. They're wrong automatically. They're going against a natural law that God laid out. All right. I better stop. Okay. I hope you have a great day. Remember to pray and read your Bible and be thoughtful, guys. Think about what's going on around you, how you can help, how you can be that good light that God put out here. He said he created us for good works. And so what good works can you do today? And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.